many years that mother waited till one morning at the door stood a gorgeous looking lady and it was grand the clothes she wore oh mother don't you know me for I've only got a cold But the purple spots upon her cheeks That tragic story told There's a spot in old Terconnell By the chapel in the glen Where a broken-hearted widow Tends the grave of Noreen Bond It's been more years since you left us But I can't believe you're gone. It was the curse of emigration that laid you low, my Noreen Bond. It was the curse of emigration that laid you low, my Noreen Ball. Great stuff, Jerry. Okay, next. An instrumental in Paul Doyle, The Mason's Apron.
so. Very so Paul. Okay, next. Sharpen your ears for this one, lads, and keep your knickers on as well, because we now have a recitation from Kevin McDermott entitled The Knickers. <laughs> I was backward and coming forward and why I didn't know. There was people said that I was shy and there was others called me slow. My father blamed my mother for her meal and she thought, what well, she maintained was all his fault, you see, all his crowd was odd. Why don't you go and get a woman, you'd often say to me, you know, when I was your age, the least I had was two or three. But here's a tip I'd give you, and it worked when I was young, if she's not in bed with where it's left, you'd be better off at home. Ah, but I had my eye on Mary Ann this past eight years or so. The only thing that held me back was in case she might say no. You see, the trouble was I turned her down back in her younger days. Now, she hadn't got any better looking, but she was not so hard to play. <laughs> if I tell you she was ugly, I would not be telling lies. You know, she once walked in a butcher shop just to keep away the flame. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at that age of my life, when it came to looks, I couldn't give a damn. Now, you would say the same yourself if you saw the cut of Mary Ann. <laughs> I often used to see her down about the shop. But I never had the courage to bring the subject up. You see, I knew she still was mad with me from I turned her down that time. But since she got a bit of land and money, well, I sort of changed me. <laughs> <laughs> I was put in contact with a gentleman, an expert in these things, and he told me that he had a plan and to go and buy the rings. So he to me, if you follow me, get a woman plan. I guaranteed in a week or two I'll have her eaten from your hand. <laughs> see, see, the next time that you meet her, pay her a lot of heed. Look at what she's wearing, see if there's anything she might need. Perhaps a scarf around her neck or something for her hair. So if you like the plan, come back to me. I'll be taken on from there. Well, it was two evenings later and I was going down for me point. When who did I meet but Mary Ann and her peddling on her bike. And just as I was meeting her, there came a big, big truck. Whoosh! Nearly blew the clothes clean off. Oh, and did they get a real good <laughs> well, there wasn't a point she was needing as far as I could see. <laughs> All the rods and ends were covered up and up of her knee. There and then I spied it. Well, a man could buy for the woman he loves. He was sitting straight in front of me. She wasn't wearing gloves.